Why is taming inflation a key priority? Well, today we're going to dive through and have a look at this. We're also going to look at how high interest rates are going to go and what the Reserve Bank's going to do in September. Let's start off on the top. We can see Anthony Albanese, the Prime Minister of Australia, says taming inflation is their key priority. If you enjoy the videos we make on this channel, please hit that like and subscribe button. The Prime Minister's talking about the fact that there's a huge pressure on the cost of living as inflation is running at the fastest pace we've seen in 21 years with the second quarter increase and is currently forecast to continue to accelerate by the end of the year. We're currently seeing that it's one of the biggest challenges faced by Prime Minister Anthony Albanese and cited that the rain or the needing to rein in the cost of living pressures, including childcare, housing and healthcare, is a key priority. And He's assured us that the inflation rate isn't going to hit 10%. Well, let's have a look here. We can see inflation hit 6.1% for the quarter ending in June. Unfortunately, in Australia, we only get this data every three months. So we do fly a bit blind during the Reserve Bank making all these rate changes to see where we're actually going to land. And we can see huge impacts on housing, transportation, um, particularly with all the fuel issues that we saw um, in the last few months. Uh, Obviously, food is another one. So we can see inflationary pressures across the board for households amongst Australia. And that's tipped to hit around that 75, 7.8% 7 uh, from uh, the numbers that we see here. And as it said here, headline inflation is expected to hit 7.75% by December. And the central bank said that um, they're predicting that will hit the target band, so the target band the Reserve Bank has as their sweet spot is 2 to 3%. Now, the Reserve Bank's actually predicted that we're going to hit that target band by uh, December 2024. They're saying that we're going to hit the top end of the band by that time. And why does the Reserve Bank want to hit an inflation target? Well, we can see, as we've talked about, the target range is between that 2 to 3%. And what it means is that if inflation is too high, the real value of money is reduced. So we see that uh, people's uh, nominal incomes uh, will need to be increased. So we'll see workers may seek larger increases uh, to compensate the cost of living being higher. And we see spendings and investment decisions may be distorted. So um, especially as we see things becoming higher and higher purchase costs, they actually may put their purchases forward sooner than originally expected to avoid paying more. So there can be dire consequences if it's too high. If it's too low, we see the exact opposite. We see consumers may purchase or may delay purchases as they expect prices will continue to fall. And we can see difficulties for businesses as they might find it hard um, to make ends meet. They might make it might make not so much sense to have as many employees. So they may lay off workers. And then that's where you'll have a spiraling of unemployment going out of control. Now, when we look at the real versus nominal, we can see the nominal income growth, let's say it's at 5%, you've got inflation at 2%. Well, then you've got real income growth of 3%. So people's borrowing or purchasing power goes up. Where you've got the same thing here, where you've got a nominal income of 2% growth, inflation at 2%. That means your inflation nominal income growth balance each other out. So you've got real income growth neutral. And then where you've got a nominal income growth of 1%, inflationary at 2%, we're going to see a negative income growth with purchasing power going down. This is something we've seen recently. Now, why is that important? And this is where the Reserve Bank comes in and they want to get it right between the cash rate and nominal income growth to get it just right. So if we find the cash rate's too high, the economic activity can reduce and inflation can reduce, but it's going to have dire consequences. Where we get the cash rate just right, we're going to find the cash rate will balance out the nominal income growth and the inflation so that the purchasing power remains relatively stable. And the same thing, if the cash rate's too low, which we've seen recently, we see a huge amount of economic activity, a huge amount of inflation, and we're going to be in a position where the purchasing power is too high. So it is a balancing act the Reserve Bank has. They want to keep the target inflation between the 2 and 3%, and that's where they see they have 
the maximum output from the economy and the maximum benefit for all those participating. And it really goes and begs the question, if there's inflationary pressures and they're trying to tame it, what's the Reserve going to do? What's the Reserve Bank going to do? Because that's one of the main uh, elements that we have or the, the government has to try and combat this. And um, where's the rates going to go in September? Well, let's have a look and see what's actually going to happen. We see NAB, the chief um, economist, Alan Oster, he's actually said that the odds of the Reserve Bank pulling off a soft landing with the economy is at a 60-40. And they have been quite aggressive. We've seen the Reserve Bank really in the last four months increasing the cash rate by 1.75%, all in a bid to tame inflation. We can see that it is having an effect on a number of borrowers, uh, a number of people out there, especially renting as well, because it's having a knock-on effect for the rest of the economy. Um, Goldman Sachs uh, top forecaster, Andrew Broke, also said that there was a 25% chance of a recession, whilst Vanguard has actually said in the next few years, there could be a 50-50 chance of it happening. Now, I don't know about you, but we do get a lot of these economists coming out with these, um, I guess, uh, forecasts and sort of giving us numbers here and you know their views on where things are going to go. I think we're only going to know really in hindsight of where we're going to land here. Um, there are potential play, you know, chances that there could be a recession. We've seen some of the banks actually say there's no chances of that happening. So getting a bit of contradictory um, information here, definitely interesting to see how things play out. Um, Macquarie Bank's economists have also said that really depends on what it means by a soft landing. Uh, they are expecting that unemployment's going to rise between four and a half to five percent. And um, I guess inflationary pressures are the real challenge. Uh, in terms of how high interest rates need to go to curb inflation, um, it's forecast, as we talked about earlier, for um, inflation to hit 7.8 percent. The question uh, really is the big one on a lot of economists' minds at present. And what we need to do be to get that inflation back under the, the target band of the Reserve Bank. And what's going to happen in September when the Reserve Bank meet up again? As we've seen, there's been three half a percent rate rises in the last three months. We saw a quarter of a percent that kicked things off in May. So what's going to actually happen and what's the Reserve Bank needing to do? Well, there was a snapshot, uh, snap poll of 20 leading economists that have recently happened. And the predictions varied. We saw Suncorp, CBA, AMP, all predicting that the cash rate needs to get to 2.6%. So currently we're at 1.85%, another 0.75 to go. We've seen on the uh, very high end, um, an independent economist, Saul Esklake, say that the cash rate needs to get to 4%, which is probably on the very high band of what we've seen in terms of forecasting. We've seen other economists like ANZ and Westpac saying 3.35. But when you average them all out amongst the respondents, 3.1% was where things were going to land. So of the 20 economists, where we might end up is at 3.1%. We're currently at one85 now, what does that mean for this um, September when the Reserve Bank meets up again? Well, bar all one economist, uh, which is Suncorps, they all predicted that there's going to be a fourth straight 0.5% increase next month when the Reserve Bank meets up. So we could potentially see another half a percent for the fourth month in a row, which would take the official cash rate up from 1.85% to 2.35%. Now, if that happens, that's obviously going to have an impact on people's borrowing ability. And what we do know is with borrowing um, capacity, every time there's a rate rise of 0.5%, that actually reduces your ability to borrow by about 5%. So it does have a knock-on effect, which in turn is going to have a knock-on effect to the market because when borrowers can't borrow as much, it means that sellers need to be more realistic with their prices because there's actually not that much capacity in the marketplace.